You are listening to the podcast of the Alexander von Humboldt Institute for Internet and Society. We report on the leading role that new technologies play in the context of the global information society, interviewing academics and industry leaders. I shall welcome Professor Urs Gasser from the Bergmann Center for Internet and Society of the Harvard Law School. Urs Gasser is teaching at the Harvard Law School at the University of St. Gallen, at the Keio University in Japan, and also in China at the Fudan University in Shanghai. And um, Professor Gasser is one of the very eminent professors and researchers in the field of Internet and society. Everybody knows that the center he is leading actually is a, the first one ever created and established in the United States and not somewhere else, but at the very Harvard University. So it's a great pleasure and honor for me to interview you for and put you some questions. But before I do so, I would just like to mention that Professor Gasser has published a very important and well-known book, Born Digital, um, and this was published in 2008. Maybe you can just give give us some some ideas of what is your book, and then tell us what are your basic and principal research questions and areas you are actually working on. So, please. So first uh, of all, thank you very much for this uh, very warm uh, introduction and welcome. I'm uh, delighted to be here in Berlin and I would like uh, to take this opportunity again to congratulate you and your colleagues um, to this initiative, to the um, foundation of this important institute. I think uh, this was a great start, this two days conference, and I'm very much looking forward to collaborating with you and your, t your wonderful team That's who has done an nice. amazing job uh, mm -hmm. here in Berlin. Um, Born Digital actually is a book that looks into uh, the ways in which uh, young users, kids, are using digital technologies. Uh, the motivation was and the working assumption was uh, that of course we all feel and, and know also as researchers increasingly that the internet impacts uh, our lives and, and um, almost all parts of our lives, be it uh, going to school, be it uh, uh, in our professional environment, uh, for our you know, political practices, practices of civic engagement. And our very research interest for a long time has been to gain a deeper understanding of these changes, to understand whether these impacts of the Internet on society are just kind of temporary uh, uh, spikes or whether they are essentially really structural changes in the information ecosystem. And uh, one way to, to better understand these and track these changes is uh, to look at young users who are deeply immersed into yeah. this digital space, who can't even uh, envision a life without Google and Wikipedia and YouTube, mm -hmm. and really contrast this particular population um, and compare this population with other populations, with the generation of my parents, for instance, and crystallize some of the issues uh, and in that way get a better uh, approximation at least of some of the policy issues that, that we need to mm -hmm. uh, think and care about, be it from a parent's perspective, from an um, educational perspective or also a, a broader societal perspective. Yeah. Did you do this more in an empirical study as a lawyer? That would be surprising. S or is it an interdisciplinary approach you have chosen? And uh, yes. Yeah, that's a, a very good question. Um, I think centers like the Berkman Center and now this, uh, the Humboldt Center here, Institute here in Berlin, we are operating in interdisciplinary teams. Uh, if we study the internet, we, we really have to bring together the best social scientists, evolutionary biologists, uh, law and policy people, oh, yeah. computer scientists and so forth to really understand uh, the internet phenomenon. 
and uh, the same was true for, for this particular research project that led to the book that you uh, kindly mentioned. Um, we work together with colleagues from various disciplines. We have done uh, uh, lots of focus group interviews, we have done survey work, uh, so we have uh, used kind of mixed methods uh, to, to gain a deeper understanding of these uh, social patterns of usage of internet by young people. I must absolutely read it. Happy I apologize <laughs> that I haven't <laughs> read okay, it yet, okay. but it is just a model for how we should work, I understand. What is your actual subject, the, your basic main subject you are working on, and what yeah. your, which questions? Yeah. So, uh, what you need to understand the Birkin Center is, is, is as you know, uh, quite a, a, an operation by now after several years. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, so we have a lot of research projects and given my job as executive director I'm involved in, in many of these projects um, and then of course part of it is my personal research agenda yes. as well so I, I'm happy to talk about both things but perhaps my personal well, interest your first. Personal first yes. um, I'm uh, we're, we're just about to, to finalize a manuscript for the next book and we is again uh, John Paul for you has also been the author of Born Digital and this book um, is looking uh, at a, a hardly accessible phenomenon at a glance and that is interoperability uh, and looks at a very hard question how complex systems work together uh, what the benefits are of complex information communication systems working together but also what some of the challenges and drawbacks are uh, and uh, so you know um, take any uh, everyday life transaction that includes the use of digital technologies. Uh, for instance, if you were to book a flight from here from Berlin to, to Boston, let's yes, say that, yes. um, you would go online, uh, you would <coughs> Google or use uh, Bing to, to search uh, uh, for the cheapest airfare. Uh, you would even have and use price comparison sites. Then ultimately you would you know, click and click. buy a flight. Fine. Yeah enter your frequent flyer card mm -hmm. of your preferred airline, uh, fast forward, uh, you would uh, call a cab, go to the airport using your mobile phone, send some text messages, check in by swiping your frequent flyer yes. card, get on a plane and the plane magically uh, will cross the Atlantic with of course a lot of technology involved and so forth. So you can trace every step actually of, of such a trivial uh, uh, everyday um, experience and look at it uh, from this systems perspective uh, and, and really try to understand what kinds of systems from reservation systems to metadata involved in comparing airfares, how do these systems need to, make, to work together uh, in order to, to enable this user experience that sometimes and most of the times is, is just seamless, seamless, it's just uh, totally convenient uh, and in other instances when something goes wrong we, we experience that we shouldn't take it for granted yes. and so we take uh, stories like that many others uh, disaster relief efforts is an important one 9-11 for instance was a very uh, important moment of interoperability and look at these working together of systems but not only as far as the technology is mm -hmm. concerned that like was the, my question the yeah. iPhones yeah. and the Blackberries yeah, yeah. or something yeah, like yeah. that uh, but really also looking at the, um, some of the upper layers. So it turns out that ultimately, of course, technology is about human beings using uh, this technology. Yeah. Uh, so we look at human interoperability, for instance, the role of language. Uh, we look also at organizational interoperability because uh, quite often these, take again this example just of a simple flight to, to Boston from Berlin, uh, there are many organizations that need to work together too, yeah, so yeah. there is an organizational layer. Mm -hmm. And then on top of all that is also an institutional, uh, if you will, a legal and policy layer. And again, these policy frameworks in this digital age and globalized world mm -hmm. need somehow to work together, which doesn't require them to be identical, but have the right interfaces. Yeah, they must understand each other. Exactly. Yeah. 
Uh, many of the things we see, for instance, in terms of privacy issues, uh, if you look at US policies and European policies, are, are such uh, struggles to, to work towards more interoperable frameworks. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the project in short. Is the passenger data question part of your subject? And absolutely, absolutely. And, and that's a perfect illustration, obviously, that while these um, interoperable interoperable systems have huge benefits for innovation, for economic growth, also for user autonomy. Uh, they also come with drawbacks. So there are security issues involved because now multiple systems or, or, or owners of systems have access points to your Absolutely. data. Uh, it comes with privacy uh, uh, risks for sure. Uh, there are other drawbacks or challenges such as diversity because when systems get more standardized as one way to get to more interoperability, uh, you may, may lose some of the diversity. So that there are significant drawbacks too and what we try to develop in this uh, research project and book ultimately is a theory of interoperability. Uh, when do we need, when do we have good reasons as pol pol public policy makers in particular uh, to foster interoperability and as to what uh, degree we want to have interoperability, but also how do we address some of, some of these uh, challenges and drawbacks. Yeah. So that, that's the project. Most amazing. A huge project, project I guess. Um, could, I, could I ask you another question now regarding this uh -huh. conference? Because um, I wonder, for somebody who is a real experienced researcher uh, in that field, uh, and you look now on what we produce, our papers here, our introductions, and do you feel somewhat uh, they will need some years to work uh, to get the state of the art to understanding, or is um, is the approach to just to ask questions to and and to try to get questions from others? How, what is your impression of the, the structure and, and the idea of this conference? Could you give me just some thoughts of this? Yeah, that's, uh, I'm happy to. First of all, I think it was a, a really good conference. And um, my biggest hope for, for this conference, as well as for the work that you will be doing, or we will hopefully yes, jointly yes. be doing uh, in this Berlin context, is, is that we really add a truly European voice yes. conversations uh, around some of the thorny uh, internet issues, yeah. global issues, be it the privacy, liability of intermediaries, broadband policy, countless mm -hmm. uh, discussions, of course. Uh, and I think we very much need a European unique European perspective on these controversies and topics uh, and I think um, already at this conference we have seen the promise of, of this kind of European voice which is more diverse which is uh, sometimes more principled, less pragmatic to a certain extent mm -hmm, than mm -hmm. say uh, uh, voices from the US or conversations we have in the US uh, and you know, may very well be in the business of building bridges between the US and also other parts of the world, including, of course, um, Asian countries. Yes. So I'm very hopeful, and I think this was a fantastic starting point. Um, and of course, uh, at the same time, we will also have the challenge, as you pointed out, um, not only to enjoy the diversity and the freshness of the perspectives, but also to create links and interfaces yes. to, to work that has already uh, been going on for, for roughly a decade now. Uh, and I think this will be a process of, again, creating interoperability. So. <laughs> Wonderful. We were so happy yesterday that you said that you will invite us to Berkman Center to Harvard next year to discuss cooperation, etc. If you now... Um, you will leave tomorrow, I guess, and uh, is there anything in your pocket you take with you except the joy and happiness of us to come next year to Harvard uh, is in, in substance and in ideas in kind of uh, questions. Is there anything new you, you bring to the United States now from here except the experience that there will be a new institute with many hopes, of course, but uh, in substance, uh, for your work, 
Is there anything, an added value for there, for you? I certainly benefited from the conversations and, and many workshops. I, I thought the contributions were really thought-provoking. And mm. while sometimes it's hard to say, okay, what's the lesson learned or the big yeah. takeaway, it, it still uh, is a moment of reflection. And I perceived it very much as kind of an opportunity to reflect on our own research agenda, yes. on my own work. Uh, and be also challenged by, by some of the uh, new perspectives that were introduced here in Berlin. Uh, so I think it will resonate uh, for quite a while, this conference, uh, and certainly what will have a direct impact is, is the connections that we've been yeah. able yeah. To, to form here in Berlin. Yes. We have never met in person before true, and it's just true. wonderful. Yeah. And uh, you know, many colleagues as well who have yes. been here, I think we, we had a, a moment of, of uh, also a moment of passion uh, and uh, you know, some momentum to, to really uh, connect the dots among individual researchers but also, as you pointed out, among research centers. And I'm very much committed uh, to carry forward this idea with you and, and your colleagues. And, you know, uh, uh, I think we need it very much to, to increase our impact and, and to work hard to address uh, some of these really challenging um, uh, issues that we face as a society yeah. when it comes to the global internet. I was so surprised that there's so much attention uh, for these questions. Uh, and I am very, very grateful that you came and that you participated so actively in the conference and that you invited us to America to build this kind of network and research on the very important questions Internet and society poses for the future. Thank you very much indeed. It was a great pleasure Thank to talk much. with you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.